This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Outrageous and unjustifiable. Those were the words used by the United Nations to condemn Israel after at least 20 Palestinian civilians died when a U.N. shelter was bombed in Gaza Wednesday. Many of the dead were children who were sleeping. U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said all available evidence points to Israel being behind the attack. It was the sixth time a U.N. shelter had been bombed since the Israeli offensive in Gaza began 24 days ago. The U.N. said it had given the coordinates of the shelter to the Israeli military 17 times prior to the attack. According to the United Nations, more than 240,000 Palestinians are now staying in U.N. shelters in Gaza. Another 200,000 Palestinians have been displaced and are staying with other families. Hours after the attack, Christopher Gunness, the spokesperson for the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, broke down during an interview with Al Jazeera. The rights of Palestinians, even their children, are wholesale denied, and it's appalling. <laughs> Joining us now is Christopher Gunness, the spokesperson for the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, known as UNRWA. He's joining us via Democracy Now! video stream from Jerusalem. <clears throat> Chris, welcome back to, uh, to Democracy Now! Can you talk Thank about you. You what much. took place yesterday? Well, we saw huge displacement in Gaza. Um, there are now, uh, in UNRWA facilities, 86 of them, um, nearly a quarter of a million people. And don't forget, these are people displaced because of the Israeli ground offensive. And according to international law, it's the belligerent parties in a conflict which are responsible for the um, humanitarian consequences, particularly towards civilians. So UNRWA has reached great breaking point, And we are at the point where eight of our staff have been killed. Our facilities are overwhelmed because of the continued displacement and the fact that Israel has dropped leaflets, etc., from the sky and sent text messages possibly thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands more are going to be displaced. We may soon find ourselves where there are tens of thousands of people in the streets of Gaza, no food, no water, no shelter, no safety, frankly, after um, we've found that Israeli artillery is capable of hitting our safe shelters. And we're saying enough is enough. We cannot be expected to have an endless capacity to absorb the consequences of Israeli military decisions. And it is time that we have acknowledged that we've moved beyond the realm of humanitarian action alone, and we have moved into the realm of political accountability and political action. Pierre Crembul, the Swiss national, who is going to be briefing the Security Council from Gaza today, it promises to be a truly historic moment. Um, it's at um, five o'clock Gaza time and is available live streaming through the UN website is going to tell the Security Council that we have reached breaking point and it's up to others with the political weight to bring correct influence to bear on the parties. And we all know exactly which parties and which influences have to be brought to bear. It's time for them to do so to end this conflict because the guns need to fall silent. Enough blood has been spilled. And that moment of ceasefire, of permanent ceasefire, will not come soon enough for the embattled people of Gaza and, by the way, for the six million civilians in Israel who've been terrorized by these appalling barrages of rockets that have been flying out. Uh, Chris Gunness, mm. how does the UN know that it was Israel that attacked the uh, UN shelter, the school that the UN is using to house thousands of refugees? Well, Amy, first of all, the word attack is not a word that we've used because that implies deliberate intentionality, and that's not something we're saying. We're saying that an Israeli artillery shell struck the school, and there's a big difference there. Intentionality is the difference. We know that because we did crater analysis. We did trajectory analysis. We analysed the debris, um, including fragments that were found at the scene, and we are confident enough in our initial findings to have gone public and to have made a very strong condemnation 
of the serious violation of international law by Israeli forces. I think the very fact that a humanitarian organization is making such an accusation against one of the most powerful armies in the world, and certainly in the Middle East, I think says something about how certain of our facts we are. But, you know, let's have a proper investigation. There must be accountability. There must be transparency, transparency and proper reporting. The truth will come out. And, you know, we hope that with truth, as is often the case, will come justice. I want to turn to Mark Regev, the spokesperson for the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who is responding to the bombing of the UN school in an interview with CNN's Wolf Blitzer. First of all, it's not clear to us that it was Israeli fire, even Israeli errant fire, that hit that UN facility. What we do know is the terrorists, uh, Hamas terrorists, were shooting at our forces and there was a firefight and they were shooting at us from the immediate vicinity of that UN uh, uh, school. Now, if our forces are in the field and being shot at, right, it's only natural that they would return fire to save their own lives. Israeli spokesperson Mark Regev also responded to the UN's finding that it was, in fact, Israeli shells which hit the school. First of all, we'll be interested to hear what they'll say and we'll cooperate in investigations if need be, because we'll be totally transparent if it was our fault, if it was errant Israeli fire. And we will, of course, uh, come clean. In the past, we have admitted when we've made mistakes. But let's be clear. And here the Secretary General of the United Nations has been very clear. He said when terrorists put weapons or use a UN facility for their military purposes, they are responsible because they are endangering the lives of everyone who's that facility. And that was clear today, that our forces were taking fire from terrorists in the immediate vicinity of that school. Therefore, it's Hamas uh, who has turned uh, this area into a war zone, and they bear responsibility. That's the Israeli spokesperson, Mark Rega of Christopher Gunness of the United Nations. Can you respond? Well, here are some questions for Mr. Regev. Do you not think that the self-described most moral army in the world, if it was going to attack, I mean, he seems to be saying that there were terrorists there, so he that there, so Israel deliberately attacked. I think that's what I heard him say. I may be wrong. But if the most moral army in the world, as the Israeli army has called itself, feels that there's going to be an attack in which um, people are going to be killed, women and children, children who slept at their parents' side on the floor of a classroom in a UN-designated safe area, wouldn't it be sensible to allow the principle of distinction to take hold and for combatants and non-combatants to be distinguished and for women and children and civilians to be allowed to leave the combat zone? And what about the notion of proportionality, the fact that you're attacking uh, militants near an UNRWA uh, compound um, and the risk is that you kill um, women and children in large numbers. Isn't that something which um, the rules of war dictate that the Israeli army should be cognizant of? The idea that because a few militants were near an UNRWA school somehow justifies um, artillery shell hitting that school and killing children sleeping by the sides of their parents seems to me at any rate as a citizen of the world and not necessarily an expert in international law, completely unconscionable. And I think the very fact that we have seen the quite proper revulsion of the world, given the carnage that we saw, not just in Jabalia, but last Thursday in Beit Hanun, I think says something about the way that these arguments are stacking up. It's fine for Israeli spokespeople to say these things, but let us not forget, Amy, that our compound in January 2009 was struck by white phosphorus with a direct hit, where hundreds of people had taken refuge. And we heard similar apologies, protestations, um, you know, all sorts of, of fire words from Israeli spokespeople, including Mr. Regev, about how heart heartbroken they were and how terrible this all was. And here we are five years later with exactly the same parties um, hitting directly UN safe areas, which are full of civilians. And, you know, one might also ask Mr. Regev about the pinpoint nature of these strikes, because if it is that um, nearly two thirds of these civilians are being struck in pinpoint strikes, one seri seriously has to wonder about the technology of the Israeli army and indeed the methodology behind their targeting techniques.
Christopher Gunnis, I want to thank you for being with us, spokesperson for the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, known as UNRWA, speaking to us from Jerusalem. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, a leading voice of U.S. Jewry, Henry Siegman, part two of our conversation with the former head of the uh, American Jewish Congress. Stay with us.